Okay, now we see that the interstitial fluid and plasma have same composition regarding the ions osmolality same composition okay that means sodium chloride urea pH etc all are same okay except one difference except plasma proteins so the plasma proteins are obviously present in the vessels that is the plasma not in this okay which one like albumin globulin clotting factors all okay. so one difference between plasma and fluid is the presence of protein in vessels but not in the interstitial fluid okay now we'll see a summary of how the body is organized okay now if you were to make all the cells in the body we can show them as mm, this arrangement of a simple epithelial cell lining all these are the cells okay supported by the basal lamina and what they have these cells contain icf okay so they all contain the icf this is the blood vessel okay containing the plasma containing the plasma okay contain the plasma and in between you can write this is the interstitial fluid interstitial fluid okay now these two combine are called as the ecf so first is our cells are not uh, in dry air they are surrounded by a liquid or just like a ocean called the interstitial fluid okay okay so that is why it is creating the environment outside the cell interstitial fluid and all their requirements are met by the interstitial fluid like a fish living in an aquarium or pond all her food come from the water of the pond and all her waste are thrown in the pond same way the cell get everything from the interstitial fluid and throw all the waste in the interstitial fluid let me give example the GIT and the liver they give glucose they give let's say glucose to the plasma clear let's say 100 milligram percent and I told you the values are same so what is the value of glucose in the interstitium also 100 so all cells are now able to get the glucose inside to the tune of 100 and how it enter via glute okay so are all cells getting the glucose yes and if they make any metabolic waste etc like let's say they make urea let's say urea so this urea will enter what will enter the interstitial fluid and as it increase it will increase in which area in the plasma also and this urea will then be removed by the kidneys kidneys remove waste so in simple language kidney cells and GIT cells are not connected but because of the interstitial fluid they are connected to each other how GIT and the liver are continuously adding raw material amino acid glucose to the plasma and from there by pumping of heart it spread to hold the body so all the interstitium contain what glucose level 100 almost everywhere so all cells are able to get the glucose from the interstitium that is their environment and they throw all the urea waste into their interstitium from there the kidney will remove so kidney clean or remove the waste produced by one or all the cells all including the GIT cells and the GIT is giving glucose to only the GIT cells or all the cells all the cells of body like farmers grow food for all Indians we doctors treat all the Indians including the farmers so are we connected to each other yes so we are helping each other so one statement I always say is one for all and all for one or the meaning that a single individual a cell cannot survive okay I am dependent on the farmers, the army personnel, the engineers, the factory workers for my needs, okay. They give me food, they give me clothing, they give me house, okay. And in return, I provide them 
हेल्थ केयर सर्विसेज आई टीच एजुकेट पीपल सो दैट इज वाई वी आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन ईच अदर इज इ सेम वे ईच एंड एवरी ऑर्गन एंड सेल आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन ईच अदर इवन वन नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपरली कैन कॉज कोलैप्स ऑफ एंटायर सिस्टम ओके सो दैट वे डिपेंडेंट ऑन ईच अदर दैट इज द एंटायर स्टोरी ऑफ द फिजोलॉजी ओके now this story that all the cells are connected to each other via their interstitium so we are having a liquid surrounding all the cells and this liquid just like the ocean where the fish survive is called as the internal environment of the cells okay so adam all exchange between all exchange between cells and vessels occur in so all exchange between cells and vessels occur in interstitial fluid so it is called as so it is called as what thing it is called as yes what thing internal environment internal environment or milieu interior okay the meaning is same it's a french word okay french because given by french you can say physiologist claude bernard so that's why it's french okay what is the meaning internal is obviously interior means it's french internal and what is the word in environment means milieu so milieu means environment okay so who create the environment interstitial fluid mcq and who gave this concept it was coined by claude bernard coined by claude bernard so that's why he explains so beautifully how all organs are functioning interacting and helping each other maintaining the organism alive that is why he is the father of physiology so father of physiology is claude bernard okay next having a environment is important but is also important to maintain the environment otherwise if the environment is altered the cells they will not be able to function right let's say if there is a very high ph low ph high temperature low temperature they will all be yes affected and they might not be able to function and might die also so that is why environment is there but we have to maintain the environment and that is homeostasis so next concept is the composition of the composition of environment is always and put internal because it's the internal is always maintained constant by body regulatory systems okay this is called as homeostasis called as a homeostasis okay so homeostasis is the basic concept in physiology okay and who gave this walter b canon so canon gave the principle of homeo in fact that is the basic principle of physiology okay so if the bp is normal all cells are getting enough uh, blood flow and they are able to function if the bp become too high or too low both are bad low bp they doesn't get the bl uh, sufficient blood and they might have ischemia hypoxia and might die and too much blood might damage the vessel put uh, heart under constant stress causing hypertrophy etc and ultimately as the vessel rupture the blood flow will not be reaching the tissue again the cells will die after this so that is why what is bad both are bad high blood flow low blood flow high bp low bp high temperature low so as doctors our work is to maintain the homeostasis okay so that is we use the drugs etc to make the person go back to normal physiological state okay so homeostasis is the basic principle okay example bp ph temperature okay sodium glucose etc are maintained 
in normal physiological range. And if they are not maintained, that is pathology, okay. Physiological range, okay. Clear? So, derangements are pathological, okay. And you will try to correct them back to the normal, okay. Clear? So, you try to correct them back to the normal, okay. But every system has a limit or something, okay. So, how they correct? We will discuss it in a uh, system like BP will discuss the negative feedback or maybe positive feed forward systems when the systemic physiology is taken care of, okay. Clear? Now, one more thing they sometimes ask is what are the concept of gain? Gain is simply defined as correction you produce divide by the error. So, very simple if they give the values ki it was a normal value, this is the change with the correction, without correction. So, you can calculate the gain by correction divide by the error. Now, we see how do you estimate this various body fluids, okay. So, estimation of body fluids. So, we use a very simple idea. Let us say, imagine I want to know the volume of a cup of uh, you can say water. So, what I do? I add some sugar, let it dissolve and now I take the small sample and get the concentration. So, we know concentration is amount upon volume, okay. Fine, this is what we know. Now, if we add already known amount, we will know the amount already and we know the concentration if you take a small sample. So, that is why what we do is first we give already known amount example 10 milligrams. So, what is already known? The 10 milligram, okay. Then we let the substance distribute completely. So, number 2, okay, okay substance or rather we use the word dye because dyes are used for estimation the dye distribute uniformly okay so dye will distribute uniformly in chamber and achieve same concentration in the chamber everywhere okay clear so, dye will be able to achieve what concentration? Same concentration almost everywhere, okay. Now, once it achieve same concentration, what are we going to do, okay. So, right. So, once it achieves same, what we do is, right. Okay. So, number 3, we take small sample. to calculate concentration, okay. Like calorimetry, etcetera, we can measure the concentration. And now, what two things we are having? We know the concentration, we know the amount. Like example, concentration we know, okay, and we know the amount, what we do not know, the volume. So, let us do a mathematical operation. If I put concentration here, and I put volume here, they both are feasible, clear. And now I can calculate the volume using the amount I give 10 milligram and the concentration I got from the small sample and that is what the method is, okay. And we give the dye, so that is why you modify it to amount of dye, amount of dye divided by concentration. This is called as dye dilution method, it is used for so many things like blood estimation, blood volume estimation, plasma, CSF, even lung volumes. So, dye dilution method, okay. So, dye dilution method. But one precaution, the dye should stay in the chamber. If the dye leaks out, the total concentration will fall and causing a false high volume. Right, one precaution, if dye leaks out, if dye leaks out, okay. So, if the dye will leak out, okay, there will be a fall in concentration, okay, because the amount given is same 10 milligram, but the concentration is falling because you are losing the dye in the chamber. So, volume will be coming false high. So, that cause false high volume, 
okay so that's why the dye leaks out of the chamber you might get a false high volume and it's not the only condition even other condition like dye dye uh, leave the chamber like example dye bind some tissue so will it be in the chamber no bind some proteins tissue or it is rapidly excreted much more than we expected rapidly excreted so all this will make the concentration fall and if there is a fall in concentration what will happen to the volume the volume will come fall high okay now what are the dyes we use next topic is dyes used dyes used okay so dyes used for estimation are as follows so start first is for total body water obviously we want a dye which should be just like water and should be going everywhere in the body water icf ecf so let's use the water but problem is water has to be converted to a dye form so you know isotopes are same chemically they are not having any difference they have same property only thing is they contain neutrons so they become heavier that's why we can use a isotope to make a water which will go everywhere the normal water is and you can measure the total body water so that's why use what isotope which are heavier so called as heavy water heavy water example d2o and t2 that is deuterium oxide and tritium oxide okay so deuterium and tritium and as we know deuterium and tritium what they are they are isotopes of hydrogen and where they will go they will go everywhere okay and one backup if not available not a good option but we have still have some backup amino pyrin okay best is deuterium oxide if not available then we should go for amino pyrin if even tto is not available okay for ecf we want a dye to stay only in the ecf so dye should stay only in ecf okay so dye should not go anywhere it should stay only and only in the ecf okay so dye should stay where only in the ecf no where else only where in the ecf okay so only in the ecf so it should be what water soluble so that's why should not cross cell membrane because if you cross cell membrane obviously you will enter the cell so that's why it should not cross the cell membrane okay okay so what should we use so that is why use a water soluble dye like sugars now sugars are having a property they are water soluble non toxic but one problem is they can enter the cell if they are small in size so we use some sugar which is bigger like example a new lin <coughs> it's a polymer of fructose now see okay fructose is a monosaccharide it is mono saccharide okay so it is a monosaccharide inulin is a polysaccharide or rather it's a polymer so polysaccharide now it can enter cell via glute enter cell by glute okay so fructose can enter cell via glute let's say glute 5 but polysaccharide inulin can't enter cell and stay where and stay in ecf only so that is why inulin will be able to measure what will able to measure the ecf because not going to cross the cell membrane whereas fructose can enter the cell because of monosaccharide okay same logic we can apply for a substance called as sucrose which is made from glucose plus fructose now both are monosaccharides both are mono mono so can they enter the cell yes so they can enter the cell but sucrose can't enter because of disaccharide so that's why we can use not glucose not fructose but sucrose 
Why? Because sucrose will stay only in the ECF, okay? Even mannitol can be used for estimation of the body, okay? Fine? So, you can use mannitol also. Next is we see the plasma. For that the dye should stay where? Only in the plasma. So let us say what is the dye we will have. So number 3, plasma. For plasma we need something stay in plasma. Okay. What says? Obviously the plasma protein. So we make it a dye, radio, labeled albumin okay so radio labeled albumin okay so how we label it with iodine i125 or i131 okay so iodine 125 or iodine 131 or if not available evans blue dye evans blue dye can be used for this particular purpose for thing evans blue dye okay fourth is icf one problem for icf you inject the dye where directly in the chamber that is almost impossible so that's why icf cannot be given by single dye so that is given by total body water minus ecf okay so use total body water subtract the ecf get the icf same way interstitial fluid is again not possible because dye if you put in the plasma it will leak into the interstitium also you can't put directly in the interstitium and wait for it to spread so that's again given by ecf minus plasma okay now the third category of fluid called as transcellular fluid transcellular fluid now it was asked recently so it is part of ecf part of ecf okay around 1 liter around 1 liter or 1.5 percent of body weight mcq okay so approximately how much 1.5 percent of the body weight okay clear What fluid? The transcellular fluid. Okay. So approximately 1.5. And what is made from? It basically includes fluids in body cavities. So include fluid in body cavities like pleural fluid, synovial fluid. Okay. Then CSF, pericardial, etc. So they are basically chamber fluid. Okay. So we can summarize that all body water is basically ICF or ECF. Okay. Two third is ICF, one third is ECF. ECF is three main parts. Okay. Two main are plasma in the vessel and between cells and vessels interstitial fluid. Okay. And what is there in the chambers and cavities? Transcellular fluid like the pleural fluid, synovial, pericardial, all are called as transcellular fluid. Okay. Now we see transport across cell membrane. So, right? Transport across cell membrane. Okay. So, how it occurs? So, the two types active and passive. Active and passive okay now what is the difference between the two so first is active is against gradient against gradient so active is against the gradient and passive is along gradient now what do you mean by gradient it means difference okay it means the difference example if something go from low to high obviously it's going in reverse direction because nature everything go from a higher to lower value because higher has a 
a higher energy level and everything want to go to a lower energy state that is increase in entropy occur all the time okay that's why a cup of tea which is hot gets cooler with time why is losing the heat a ice melt why is gaining the heat why everything is going from higher to a lower that is the natural direction of flow but if you want to reverse it you want to make a cup of tea hotter obviously you have to make it hotter by adding energy so that's why require energy example pumps so pumps are active because they are going in reverse direction okay clear whereas it is going in what direction along that is high to low okay so going from high to low okay high to low so that is why no atp energy is needed so atp or energy is not needed example oxygen carbon dioxide diffusion oxygen carbon <coughs> dioxide <coughs> diffusion okay so simple question if you go from higher to lower that is higher to lower is passive okay and lower to higher is active see this diagram let's say this is a cell and there is what a substance x here and here it is 100 here and 50 so obviously more molecules are here and this so that's why net direction is always out that is why it is going out till it become 75 75 okay so that's why it want to make the gradient zero so the gradient right now gradient is 100 minus 50 that is 50 okay and it will do a passive transport okay so it will do a passive transport till it become what till it become equal to what zero okay so that's will go till it becomes 75 75 then it's stop so it's passive right now so passive will stop till gradient is zero okay okay till or rather when gradient is zero okay so when it becomes 75 the passive will stop okay whereas active is going in reverse direction so that's when need to add energy example if i heat this chamber the molecules will again go outside and now what happens is they are going like this 50 100 and now they are going out so they are what lower inside higher outside why because you're using atp it's a active transport so if i give energy here like let's say i give energy how i heat this room as I heat the molecules become more in motion and that's when they start moving what direction from 50 to 100 although it was not allowed in what terms in the passive terms but because I am adding energy heat or something pressure they will keep going out so that is why now I am going against gradient so 150 is along but 50 100 is against so that's why now you are going reverse direction or the green minus 50 and you are going in direction from lower to higher this is active transport okay clear now what are the types of active so, right now remember the examples of active transport and various types i've discussed in kidney also git etc that were primary and secondary so follow that okay so primary active and secondary active remember easy version all are against gradient okay all use energy but primary is what first is primary is it is using atp directly atp directly okay and here it use energy indirectly right bracket via pumps so pumps are indirect method or direct pumps are direct and anything depend on pump is indirect so that is why it's called a secondary active example pumps and here example is sodium symports or antiports sometime antiport also but most are symports okay most are simple okay so how to remember p for pump P for primary. So all pumps are what transport? They are primary transport. Pumps are primary. P pumps, P primary. Okay. Whereas most of the sodium imports, most 
of the sodium symports, they are what in nature? They are secondary, symports are secondary or anything coupled with sodium, so sodium is secondary active, coupled with sodium, okay. Example like sodium glucose import, sodium glucose import, sodium amino acids import, sodium iodide import in the thyroid. They all are examples of secondary active transport, okay. So, they all are examples of secondary active, okay, clear. Now, passive transport, it is basically contains simple diffusion, and facilitated so simple diffusion and facilitated okay also an osmosis also but osmosis is discussed in kidney so osmolarity how it occur that is discussed in kidney actually osmosis water movement is not the movement of solutes that is the gases or salts. So, that is why it is kept secret. Okay. So, osmosis is again passive is going what along the water grain, but point is it is kept separate because the solvent movement not the solute. Here solvent move these two are solute movements. Okay. Now, right on, simple diffusion is simple what? Okay. So, both are along no what happens? No, no carrier used. Okay. And here to increase rate of diffusion, to increase rate of diffusion, carriers or transporters are needed. Okay. So, carriers or transporter are needed. Here the example is oxygen or CO2 diffusion, which occur directly across the membrane without using any kind of transport, okay, clear. So, then the carbonous diffusion does not require any kind of transport, it can directly cross the respiratory membrane and be exchanged, okay. So, now this is general physio, which is just an introduction to what? all the systemic physiology topics. So, that is why we have discussed in detail the topic of simple diffusion, fixed law, how area thickness affect the membrane disease, ILDs properly there. Okay. So, do not think why general physics is not covering this much because it is my habit of taking the topic where it is required the most rather than doing everything in segregation. Okay. So, it is basically a coherent system of teaching where when you go to the topic of kidney, you will find osmolality, how the osmolality is calculated, how water is moving, what counter current system is. So, osmosis is taught there. Okay. When you go to the active passive in GIT kidney, that how Tmax is there, the glucose absorbed against the grain, there I have discussed the secondary active transport in proper drill. Same way, simple etc. are discussed in relevant topic. So, please see all the lecture, you will find all the stuff rather than just seeing ki why it is covered in not details etcetera. Okay. And here the example of carrier is example is glute. So, glute is causing what along the grin okay. and this is basically yes having yes okay. uh, transport that is ok. And one special thing is facet it follows saturational kinetics follows saturational kinetics that means after some time the rate will not increase why because all the transporters are saturated. So, the V max become fixed. So, V max is constant ok. So, V max will not change it become constant. So, V max would be constant ok. Whereas, the simple diffusion does not follow this ok. Where is simple diffusion it is non saturable. Okay. It can keep increasing, the rate is not fixed, it can keep increasing, it has no saturation or Vmax fix. Okay. So, again show in graph see, let us say this is the rate 
and this is the concentration. So, this is the graph of simple diffusion, this is simple diffusion, it is just increasing and whereas, this is the graph of the okay. So, it rises, but here this is V max. So, now you cannot increase the rate, this km and this okay. So, that is why the rate is faster, but it becomes this faster rate. So, this is facility okay. So, rate is max more than the simple, but it is saturation okay. So, it can be saturated. So, that is why at low concentration to get a high rate we prefer facilitated, but as the concentration increase the rate cannot increase because the saturation of the transporters is occur. So, that is why what happens the V max is constant as transporters get saturated. Okay. So, that is why they have a fixed V max which cannot be change or increase. Okay.